The topic of this video is histograms. I have my vertical and horizontal margins set up. I'm going to put my date and topic in the right-hand corner. You can see I also have my essential question recorded. What is a histogram and how do we create one? A histogram is a type of bar graph, but there are a few differences between this type of graph and the bar graph that we've seen previously. First of all, in a histogram, the bars in the graph represent numerical intervals, groups of numbers, not just one specific number. And there are two things that we want to keep in mind when we're talking about the bars of a histogram. The intervals that we create in our histogram must always be the same size within one histogram, and there are no gaps in between the intervals. Let's take a look at some data and we'll see how this can be turned into a histogram. Here's some data for some science test scores. I know it looks like a lot, but go ahead and write it down so you have it as well. Right? Everything that I'm writing we should have in our journals. The first thing, once we have it all written down, that we want to find is the range. We want to find the highest and lowest score. In this case, the lowest score was 65 and the highest score was 99. I need to make sure my histogram covers that range. If I were making a typical bar graph, I would have to count from 65 to 99, and I might be counting by ones, and that could be really cumbersome and long. The histogram allows us to group some of the numbers together, so I need to think about how I want to group this up. Each of these groups will represent an interval in my histogram. Looking at my data, I think I'm going to make my intervals groups of 10. I could choose to make groups of 5 or 7, but for me it just makes sense to use 10 here. I'll start with 60 and work my way up. So here you can see my first interval is from 60 up to 69. My next interval will go from 70 to 79. By choosing these intervals, I have covered my bases. My 65 will be in my first interval, and my 99 makes it just barely at the top of my last interval. Now I just need to see how many values are in each interval. So I need to go through and count how many numbers are in the 60 to 69 range. And I can see right away that there's just the one. So I'm going to put one here in my table. When I count the number of values that are in the 70s, I see there's one, two, three, four, five numbers that are between 70 and 79. If I count my 80s, I see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers that span 80 to 89. And lastly, I'm going to look through and see any numbers that are from 90 to 99. Here I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers that are between 90 and 99. With this table of data ready, I can now make a histogram. Like a line plot and a bar graph, I need to create a horizontal line with my numerical values. This time, however, my values are the intervals that I created. I'm going to make them a little wider than a normal graph. I need to make sure, though, that they are all the same size as one another. Also, like any other graph, this needs a label. I'm going to go ahead and call this scores, because that's what these numbers represent. Like a typical bar graph, I also need a vertical line. And just like the bar graph, this is going to measure frequency, or how often those values occur. So I'm going to put frequency as my label on my left-hand side. According to my table, my highest frequency, the numbers that come up the most often, are in the 90 to 99 range, and there are seven of those. So I need to make sure that my frequency goes up as high as seven. And of course, we don't want to forget a title. I'll just call this Science Test Scores. Now I can go ahead and graph my data. There was only one student who fell in the 60 to 69 range. So all I have to do is in my 60 to 69 interval, go up to the 1 and mark that in as one student in that range. Right? It's a little bit wider than a typical, typical bar graph, but that's because it's representing more than just one number. It's representing a whole range of numbers. There were five students in the 70 to 79 range, so for this one I have to go up to my frequency of 5. And notice that unlike the bar graph, these bars all touch. These, this is a continuous count of our data. 
in my table, there were six students who were in the 80 to 89 range, so I need to go over here into my histogram, find my 80 to 89 interval, and mark that there were six students who were in that category. And lastly, from the 90 to 99 range, there were seven kids who made those scores. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that in as well. And that's a complete histogram. We can see in a histogram um, some trends, right? We can see that the largest group of kids falls into this A range, the 90 to 99 range. And the smallest of kids were down here in the 60 to 69 points. Right? It's easy to find trends that way. It looks a lot like a bar graph, but instead of tracking individual values with gaps between the bars to show they are distinct, we are looking at groups of data. We create intervals, and there are no gaps. These are all touching each other. So now ask yourself, did you find out what a histogram is? Did you learn how to make it? Rewatch anything that might be confusing. Jot down any questions that you might have. We'll practice this in class, and we'll have a chance to use our own data to create a histogram as well.